Good morning, family. It's Wednesday morning. Early in the morning, uh, I already had a cup of coffee. I want to welcome you this morning to, to the morning devotion. I'm delighted to be with you and to share with you the Word of God again. Remember, we're talking about the wisdom of God. Monday, I spoke about um, walking in the fear of the Lord. Uh, this morning, I want to, to talk to you about the providence of God. It's one of the aspects um, that I believe is very confusing at times for people. And uh, it also causes people to, to be angry toward God, um, not understanding the, the uh, providence of God. So it, it, it's a big word, but it really just means the intervention of God in his creation. One of the most bizarre stories in the Bible is the story of Job. I really enjoy reading um, the book of Job. There are a lot of lessons to be learned uh, out of that. And uh, so we're going to delve into that a little bit this morning. The word says uh, Job was from Uz. He was a wealthy man. Uh, the word says he was blameless and upright. And he turned away from evil. Isn't that such a wonderful um, character reference? Uh, Job had seven sons and three daughters. He possessed 7,000 sheep. 3,000 camel, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkey. So Job had it all. He was, um, his life was successful and uh, everything going for him. Then in Job 1 verse 6 to 12, um, the, the sons of God presented themselves to him and, and Satan also appeared. So God asked him, Satan, where were you? And Satan says that he was walking the earth. And then God asked him, did you see Job? And immediately then God repeats the character reference. Uh, God said, there's no one like Job. God described Job as blameless and upright. And Satan then accused God of protecting and blessing Job. And said to God that that's the reason why he serves you. So Satan challenged God to lift his hand from Job. And he said, then Job will curse you in your face. So God agreed and allowed Satan to set his hand against Job. But only against his possessions, not his life. So if you read in verse in Job 1 verse 15 to 19, that depicts how Satan took all that Job had, his livestock, his children, his health. Can you imagine losing it everything in one day, in one single day, everything you had, your children? Job 1 verse 22, it says, in all of this, Job did not sin. Or charged God with wrong. Amazing. Amazing to think that a person could go through all these things and still he wouldn't turn against God. I believe if there's anybody in the Bible that had the right, well in my eyes in any event, to feel done in and that, that God has forsaken him, then it was Job. Well we know Job, uh, that God uh, restored Job. He gave him double the riches he had. He also had seven sons again and three daughters. The word says that his there was no one on earth as beautiful as his daughters. Now remember we're talking about God's wisdom. Now the word wisdom is used 19 times in the book of Job. And, and this is what Job had to say about the wisdom of God. There are a few verses we're just going to look at. Job 11.5 says, But oh, that God would speak and open his lips to you, and that he would tell you the secrets of wisdom, for he is manifold in understanding. Job 12 verse 13, With God are wisdom and might. He had counsel and understanding. Job 22 verse 12, But where shall wisdom be found, and where is the place of understanding? Now, what's the lesson here? What can we take from this? You see, the providence of God is an action by God in his wisdom to interfere, 
to do a sovereign act and change the normal course of events, be it in the life of a person or any aspect of his creation. Remember, God turned back time. The earth stood still for a day. We read that Job did not sin or had any charge against God. After all that happened to him. And the question is why? Why would Job be peaceful? Well, I believe that, God, that Job knew God. He knew that there was no evil in God. He knew that where there was light, there's no darkness. You see, he knew God is good and that he was only good. The events in Job's life teaches us that at times God will allow things in our lives through his providence. For the good of others, for the good of yourself, even as in the situation with Job. God really taught Job who he is. In Job 42 verse 3 to 6, Job actually confesses. Let me read the verses for you. He says, Who is he who hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have spoken what I did not understand. Job says, yeah, I spoke things about God. He didn't understand. Things too wonderful for me, yes. I did not know. Here I beseech you, and I will speak. I will ask you, and you will cause me to know. I have heard of you by hearing. Job says, yeah, I knew God by hearing, but now my eyes has seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. You see, through all of this that happened to Job, he now says, now I know God. And what is so wonderful in Job 42 verse 16 the word says, and after this, Job lived for 140 years. And he saw his sons and his sons' sons, four generations. You see, because God had a plan for the life of Job, Job understood. He never turned against God. Isn't that a wonderful witness? So family, often these things happen in our lives and we don't understand. But we know God. That is the secret. If you know God, you would know whatever he does, he does out of his wisdom and out of his counsel and that we need to accept that he will make everything work, work to the good um, of his children. So let's pray together. Father God, I thank you this morning that we can come to your um, throne of grace, Lord. Thank you that uh, from the the story of job we could learn this morning father god that everything you do is in your plan in your sovereign plan father god that you do it from your wisdom your providence father god and we know lord that uh, that you good that you love us father god that you won't do anything to harm us but that you want to prosper us father god we thank you this morning for your word your word is the truth lord and we thank you for uh, the guidance of your Holy Spirit in our lives, Father God. Thank you for your Son that died on the cross for us, Father. And we know through that, Father God, that you have a, a unconditional love for us, Lord. And we thank you for that in the wonderful name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Family, thank you for spending this time with me. I want to bless you this morning. And uh, may you have peace. And may we have wisdom today in everything that we do. Um, and you must have an awesome, awesome day. Amen.